What if you could fly like a bird, soaring through the skies with the freedom of an eagle or the grace of a hummingbird? Humans have dreamed of flight for centuries, but what would it take for your body to achieve such a feat? Could you truly adapt to an aerial existence, or would the physical demands of flight bring you crashing down? Let's explore the science of avian flight, human physiology and the challenges of aerial survival to determine if you could take to the skies or if gravity would keep you grounded as I, a curious stick figure, analyze this fascinating experiment in human flight. Birds are built for flight in ways humans are not. A bald eagle, for instance, has a wingspan of six to eight feet with feathers designed to reduce drag and create lift as air flows faster over the top of the wing than underneath, following Bernoulli's principle. Their bones are hollow, reducing weight while maintaining strength. An eagle weighs only about 10 pounds despite its size. Humans, however, are much heavier. An average adult weighs 150 pounds with dense bones and muscles not optimized for flight. To fly like a bird, you'd need wings spanning at least 20 feet to generate enough lift, but attaching such wings to your arms would require massive pectoral muscles, like those of a bird, which comprise 30% of their body weight. Human pectorals are only about 1% of our body mass, so you'd need to bulk up your chest muscles to 45 pounds, an anatomical impossibility without drastically altering your skeletal structure. I imagined myself as a stick figure with giant wings flapping proudly until my tiny human arms gave out after two flaps, sending me tumbling back to earth with a thud. Energy demands would be another hurdle. Flying is incredibly energy intensive. A hummingbird burns four calories per minute while hovering, equivalent to a human burning 2,000 calories per hour during flight. Humans typically need 2,000 calories daily, but flying for an hour would require doubling that intake. You'd need to consume high-calorie foods constantly, like 10 peanut butter sandwiches per hour, to keep up, assuming you could even digest that much while flapping. Birds have a high metabolic rate and a specialized digestive system to handle this, but humans would struggle with fatigue and hunger mid-flight. At high altitudes, you'd also face lower oxygen levels, around 10% less oxygen at 5,000 feet, making breathing harder, especially during the exertion of flight. Birds like bar-headed geese migrate over the Himalayas at 20,000 feet, but humans risk altitude sickness above 8,000 feet without acclimatization experiencing dizziness, nausea, and shortness of breath. I pictured myself as a stick figure soaring at 10,000 feet, feeling majestic, until I got lightheaded, forgot how to flap, and had to crash land in a tree to catch my breath. Environmental challenges would add to the difficulty. Birds navigate wind currents and thermals, rising columns of warm air to conserve energy, but humans lack the instincts to do this effectively. A sudden gust could send you tumbling, and flying in storms would be perilous. Rain would soak your wings, adding weight, while lightning poses a deadly risk. In 2019, a study estimated that 8 million birds die annually in the U.S. from collisions with buildings. Imagine how many humans would crash into skyscrapers or power lines without bird-like reflexes. Temperature is another issue. Air can drop to negative 20 degrees Fahrenheit at high altitudes, risking hypothermia without insulation. Birds have feathers for warmth, but you'd need specialized gear to avoid freezing mid-flight. Predators like hawks might also see you as a target. Flying humans would disrupt aerial food chains, potentially attracting unwanted attention. Flying like a bird would require superhuman changes, massive wings, hollow bones, a bird-like metabolism, and enhanced instincts for navigation and survival. Without these, the energy demands, environmental hazards, and physical strain would ground you quickly. Humans are better off admiring birds from the ground. Our bodies are built for walking, not soaring. What bird would you want to fly like if you could take to the skies? Share your winged dreams in the comments. If this high-flying experiment intrigued you, give us a thumbs up and subscribe. We've got more wild questions coming. Stay tuned, and let's keep exploring the science of survival together.